Hello everyone and welcome to my Ultimaker Kira tutorial. Now if you don't know what a slicer is or a slicing software is, then hey, welcome to the world of 3D pr printing because you're definitely new to this. Glad you came along for the ride. A slicer software is a type of software that changes your 3D model files like STLs into .gcode files. A .gcode file is readable by the 3D printer and lets you 3D print the models that you want to print out. So basically 3D printing doesn't work unless you do this conversion. Anyway, now that you know what a slicer is, it's time to go download it. Of course, most people don't really need this step, but I'm going to show it anyway. You go to the Ultimate Your Cure website, you can download it for Windows or Mac, choose your laptop or your computer or whatever you have. And welcome to my computer. And welcome to Kira. This is what the software looks like, and of course, if you didn't download it, like I told you to earlier, you can download it here at this link that's in the description if you want it. You can download for free, choose your Windows or Mac, and then you can just open it up. I pinned it to my taskbar, especially if you're going to do a lot of 3D printing, you're going to want to do this, but for now, let's just talk about this. Here we have our little bed. Now, of course, for me, I already have my printer set, but if you want to add your printer, let's say you don't have a Creality Ender 3 Pro like me, you can add any of your printer. If you have one on the network, it'll ask you to add that one. If you don't have one on the network, which most people won't, of course, you can look at all these different brands, like, for example, Creality. And for, well, obviously, the one they're going to have open is Ultimaker, because, of course, Ultimaker make Cura. Just choose your printer and move on. Of course, I don't need to add a printer because I already have mine right here. So let's move on. We need to open up a file of any kind. So let's go up here to this folder, click on it, and we can go to our, this is what I have as my Callum Jantz thumb drive, where I have a lot of my 3D prints. So let's choose some model. Let's just choose, let's go down here and see what we got. Let's go with this fish, why not? It's a pretty good sized statue, so it'll take a second to load. And as you can see, it's, it's not really ready to print, which gives us plenty of time to go through our basic resizing tools. First of all, we have movement along the planes your X, Y, and Z. You can drag these arrows to move it back and forth, up and down, side to side, whatever, wh wherever you want to take it. Or you can do more precise by typing in, say you want it to be at 50, you can just type in 50 and it'll move it there. Of course, just moving it around. You can put it in different spots on the bed, which is helpful if you want to print multiple parts to something. Next we have resizing, which we clearly need to do. You can manually change everything over here. You can change your X, change your Y, change your Z. Although this is a lot more important, you can change the percentage size, so obviously I'm going to make this thing smaller, do about 50%, press enter. Now that it is at 50%, it's a much more manageable size. And of course you have snap scaling and uniform scaling. Most of the time you're just going to use uniform scaling on, but you can turn this off and then custom, and then, okay, let's turn it off actually. Watch what happens if I change the X, but I have uniform scaling off. Let's change this to 80%. Only that one changes, so now my fish is like stretched out more. Alright, our fish is still not ready because it's not rotated the right way and it's underneath the freaking bed. So what we can do is we can go over to rotation, and go to reset, and go lay flat, and then lay and then select face to align with the build plate. But in my opinion, it's much easier just to grab these and turn it like so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it up on the z-axis, I'm gonna move it to zero. And now it's sitting on the plane, as you can see. Although it's still a little bit outside of my build plate, so we're gonna move it in a little bit just using our arrows. And now, as you can see, it's not s striped anymore, so that means it's in a place where the printer could actually print out this model. As you might also be able to see, there's a lot of red spots, and you might be wondering what those are. Those are places where there's an overhang, where you can't just print on thin air, right? So you're probably going to want to put supports there. We'll get back to that in a second, but let's just finish up looking at these. Our rotation, of course, you can rotate here. I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave it straight. I'm going to leave it flat. You can rotate it like this not recommended, and rotate it like this, also not recommended, but still very useful, make him do a, a flip. The, okay, these bottom three ones are not nearly as important, these top three are great for resizing and relocating everything, but as you can see, our fish is more or less in the right spot, you can see that he's got some red spots, some overhang where we need to put supports, but let's go to the next part. Over up here, we have our different quality settings, different print settings. These are very important. You can do a lot of tinkering with these, but honestly, there's a few that I want to go over. First, we're going to start with layer height, the most important one. As you can see up here, we just have our different qualities. 0.2 millimeters is a layer height. Low quality is 0.28, not recommended. Probably won't work that well. Dynamic quality is 0.16, super is 0.12. This is specifically for my printer. It's different for other printers. The issue with this, though, is if you want to say you're printing at standard quality and you want to print at dynamic quality, you're going to have to relevel your bed. And this is because Obviously, it's not quite at the same height as it was before, and that could be an issue. You could be too far away from the bed and your stuff won't stick. Or if you go to low quality, you'll be too close to the bed and you'll jam up your printer. 
So most of the time I'd recommend staying in one kind of quality. So I usually stay in standard because it doesn't use as much filament and stuff still looks good. And of course if you want something to be really detailed you can go to super or dynamic or whatever you want. That's layer height. Pretty simple. It's also right here if you want to edit it. So we have shell. Not very important. You won't use this very much. Let's move on. Infill. This is important. Right here is our infill density and our infill pattern. Now by default I believe your infill is on triangles but I recommend cubic. It makes it so your nozzle doesn't jerk as much and you won't knock over your own print. You have your infill density right here. This is also important. So let's be honest you don't need that much infill so I leave mine super low to save filament but of course you can up this up to 15 or 10 or whatever you want. I leave mine at 5 and I think by default it's at 15 but you don't need that much most of the time. Anyway moving on. Material. This shows your printing temperature at the nozzle and your build plate temperature. Now this, of course, you can change as much as you want. These were the default ones for my Kier for my Ender 3 Pro. I mostly leave them at this, but sometimes I run the nozzle a little bit hotter. Other than that, I don't touch these too much. I like to keep the build plate at 60, makes it nice and warm, makes things stick. Of course, you can change these as much as you want, but these are just what I like to leave it at. Printing speed. This is also important if you want your prints to go slower or faster, more detailed or less detailed. Most of the time, I leave mine at 70. It usually, it runs pretty quick, and it usually doesn't make too many mistakes, but of course if you want to slow down, like even more detailed prints, and you want to go like 40, especially if you're printing lithophanes, which if you want to know how to print them, here's an info card. You can do print speed, you can change this, make it nice and nice and slow, or you can go up to 100, and you can go higher than this, but of course you have to do a lot of tinkering to get it to go faster than 100. If you want to know why, you can click this video, another info card. But I usually leave mine at 70, because that's nice, and it's a pretty decent speed, but still gives good quality. Travel. We have our enable retraction. Basically, if a, if a print nozzle moves up and moves somewhere else, it's going to retract your filament just a bit so it doesn't drip filament everywhere. I recommend just leaving this on. Z-hop is another thing that I think is nice to have sometimes, especially if your layers are shifting. What this does is whenever it goes from one spot to another, it like lifts up your nozzle just a little bit, and this helps not uh, hit your actual print and knock it over. So most of the time I don't need to leave this on, but if you want to leave it on, there's nothing wrong with that, so you may, may as well. Print cooling, this just changes the fan on the front of your printer, so that one that's like right in front of the nozzle, usually I just leave this at 100%. There's no reason to make it lower most of the time. Support, now this is pretty important, especially for a statue like this. As you can see, it has a lot of red where a lot of places are overhanging. If you want to generate support, you can click this. The one issue I have with Cura is that supports aren't very custom. You just kind of have support everywhere or support nowhere. So this is just kind of what you have to work with. Support placement, you can touch the build plate or put it everywhere. You can change the angle. I don't recommend changing the angle. Just leave it at the default. It's usually fine. And then the last thing I want to go over is our build plate adhesion. There's four different settings. Most of the time I go with none. You usually don't need any. But you can do a skirt, which puts just a little ring around the, out the outline of your print. A brim gives is uh, is like the skirt but it's more attached to your print and a raft is like a thick a, or a decently thick layer of plastic that goes underneath your print I do not recommend this unless you really 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 need it most of the time I just go with none and you'll probably be fine and there's dual extrusion stuff if you have a dual extrusion printer I don't but you can work with that if you want to so that's most of the basic stuff and the last thing of course if your file is ready you can preview it you can see what it'll look like but of course, since it's not sliced, we can't look at it right now. Monitor, don't really need to worry about that. Let's go to slice. Let's slice our thing. And right now, it is converting our model here to a G-code file, which, like I said earlier, is what a printer can read and what actually allows your printer to print things. So it's pretty important. All right, over here, it gives us an estimate of how long it'll take and how much filament it'll take. So these are very important measures, especially if you are trying to save filament or you don't have a lot of time. These are nice just to know. Very useful little tools. Of course, now that it's sliced, we can go to our preview. It'll take a second to process, but it'll show all of our layers. And what you can do, is you can come to this slider over here, and it'll it'll like show all the layers being printed. As you can see, I added support. Now, I don't really know why, but my support is the same color as my model, and I'm not really sure why it does that, but we're not going to worry about it. Usually, if you just have installed Cura, your support is a different color than the yellow that the model is, but I'll have to fi figure that out later. As you can see, you can just watch the layer heights get built, and you can see that's also the first layer. So let's go up to the top. You can also play it. You can also play the layers. So you just click the play button, and actually you can watch individual layers get printed. My bad. That's how this works. So let's say you want to watch them, watch it print layer one. 
it'll it'll show you the nozzle printing layer one. Now this is just a nice setting. I don't know if you necessarily need it, but it's kind of fun to watch sometimes. So that's an, that's another option. Now of course, if you want to save your little print, you can either save to file and just save somewhere random, or what I recommend is to save to a removable drive. As you know, with your 3D printer, it comes with an SD card. Right here, I don't have my SD card down here right now. That's my fault. But if you have it and it's plugged into your computer, it'll say save to removable drive and whatever the name of your SD card is, and then you would save it there. Click here, and then it'll save. And that is the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was very helpful for you. I hope you learned a lot, and I hope that you have a lot of fun with your 3D printer, 3D printing, and your slicer software. There are other slicer softwares out there, but Cura is free and basic and very simple to use and has pretty much anything you'll ever need. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm Cal from CI Inventions, and I will see you in the next video.